Welcome to your kid's dirty room, where the dust is now sitting peacefully on the floor. And the dust is made of all kinds of different materials and chemicals and tiny creatures. If you have vinyl floors or stain resistant carpets, the dust is impregnated with especially toxic chemicals you don't want in your body or your children's bodies. So we take our handy vacuum and suck all that dust off the floor where it's resting up into the vacuum and blow it up into the air we're breathing. Do you know how fine of a filter is in your vacuum right now? If you don't care about the quality of filter in your vacuum, I promise you the manufacturer won't either. So now we've taken the dust from a relatively safe resting place and blasted it up into our breathing air where it's definitely unsafe for us. Remember, there's no such thing as a healthy amount of particles to breathe. We can now show you exactly what we choose to clean with in our new home. First, when we come inside, we take our shoes off since rule one in healing your home chem is don't bring bad things home. The impact of this cannot be overstated. Here's Corbett vacuuming up the dust and dirt that shows up anyway, and don't feel bad. Remember that human beings ourselves create a dust cloud of skin flakes around us, estimated at about a pound per year, which is almost half a person over a lifetime. There's something else interesting about the science of a central vacuum system like this. You can choose to put the fan unit in an outside space, like an attached garage. That would mean pulling air from the floor and blowing it outside, which in a super airtight home like ours may create a suction pressure over the entire house. That's why we put our vacuum unit in the laundry room, so it exhausts inside. And since they put a HEPA filter inside there, the air coming out is clean, which we all know is the whole point. And whether you use a central vacuum or a handheld, it's not important. The HEPA filter is. So I piped up the system for this Newtone Pure Power 650. Brone systems are what we used in the tiny lab for all the ventilation. And so I know that it's a good company. Brone Newtone makes pretty solid products. This is a widespread central vacuum. I will say that getting central vacuum parts, you're gonna have to order away for almost anything. The one central vacuum store here in Atlanta is like an hour and a half each way. So I'm not gonna just be like, oh, I ran out of the pipe. I'm gonna go out there. So I figured out a way to retrofit normal two inch PVC and use adapters to go in and out. And depending on who you ask, some people get really upset when you tell them that you did that. Um, you can see the comments on that video, but you will also find vacuum stores that make adapters for that exact purpose because they know that this is a problem. The schedule 40 PVC that I've got running throughout my house, it's a little bit thicker. Um, but it's a lot easier to get a hold of. And so it'll work probably just the same as the thinner stuff that they use for central vacuum systems that those manufacturers make. We do love using this. It's very easy to uh, lug just the hose around the house and the fittings that are for it are pretty good. So they get the dirt out of the carpets and off of the flat hardwood floor very well. So we like using it, but also, performance is important. Now, the sound-wise, as long as you're not standing right next to the unit here in the laundry room, um, it's fairly quiet anywhere else in the house, and I will show you a sound test in a few minutes. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and run a performance test on this. So I've got my Testo kit that I'm gonna hook up. So when we get this fired up, which is pretty easy to do on the handle, and it's important to wire up the electrical wiring for this, as well as the um, air piping. <laughs> First thing we can do is test the pressure in the system, which is about 3,000 pascals. That's about the same as 12 inches of water column. So that seems like a lot. And now we can test the velocity of this as well. And even though we're at about six or 7,000 feet per minute, that's the speed of the air, it's only pulling about 50 to 60 CFM. So the 50 to 60 CFM is not a lot of air. That's about the same as a bath fan. Now the temperature that ended up coming out of this, we're at 142 degrees. That's pretty hot. So in this small room, 
which is a laundry room typically, and we will have doors closing this in. When we run the vacuum cleaner, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we open the doors because otherwise this room is gonna start overheating. Now the other thing is that I do have an exhaust stack in this wall right over here that I can open up at any point and I can put a port to exhaust air from this room to outdoors anywhere up and down this wall. So I may be playing down the line with using that and maybe having it be up high so that all the warm air, which rises of course, is gonna be pulled out at the top of the room. But for the amount of air that's being pumped into this room, which is 50 CFM, there's no way I'm gonna exhaust a whole 50 CFM out of this tiny laundry room. So that's not a long-term fix, that's a Band-Aid over part of the problem. The other thing is we just wanna open this up. So just think about that temperature thing. Of course, this happens with any vacuum. All vacuums create hot air because it's got a motor running inside. But in this case where you've got it stationed in one particular part of the house, this is a consideration that we wanna take into account. There is another test that I would like to run right now because this thing might seem like it's a little bit loud to you if you're standing right next to it, which you never will because you're never vacuuming in the room where the vacuum is, you're room vacuuming in the house. Um, but just so that I can make a point to you, here is a decibel meter app that I've got on my phone. And you can see that it's picking up the sound of my voice if we listen to just silence in the house. It shows up at about 30 something. That's just the sound of things sitting still. And you'll have the same thing happen outside. You never have actual zero decibels. Now the way decibels work is that every 10 dB gain sounds twice as loud to a human being. So what we've got here is the ability to find out how loud this is, which is a number that might not make any sense. And I will compare it to something else that we do know what it is. So here we go. Here's the sound of the central vacuum running. So that was 80 decibels based on what we were just measuring. Now here is a dust buster. And I'm gonna put this right up here next to it and see what this does as well. Something like 85 decibels. So if you ever use a dust buster, just know that the dust buster is louder, scientifically speaking, than the central vacuum that you see on the wall behind me, which is kind of insane. But uh, I put up with this all the time. So even if I'm standing right here, which again, never gonna happen because you don't vacuum in the room where the vacuum is, you're gonna vacuum the rest of the house. It makes sense that you would want to buy one that is a little quieter at least than this noisy thing. Now, as mentioned, the HEPA filter inside this unit is so important because all of the uh, air that's been processed, hopefully has all the stuff taken out of it, is coming out right there at that little white pipe coming out of the side. And this is our laundry room, so there will be clean clothes in here. So if there was not the HEPA filter in it, and we had this inside, then it would get the, house, the clothes all dusty. Now, if I was going to try and test the particulate coming out of that hole, I would need to do it real because we like to know that we're actually doing a real test. We would need a very expensive piece of equipment only really used by chemists who do research. So what I can show you instead is the particle monitor that we have installed on our uh, return plenum for the HVAC system. It's called a Haven and it monitors particulates as well as a bunch of other factors. And I'll get into that more when we talk about the monitoring systems involved in this house, which will be another video. But for right now, you can see that <clears throat> even though we vacuum regularly throughout the week, there is no particular spike of particulate during that time. So that's a good thing to know. And that's basically the best you're gonna do as far as tracking with consumer, even prosumer grade particulate monitors, which we call particle counters, but they don't really do that. And if you want to know more about that, watch a bunch of other videos on our channel about the home chem project. I hope you've enjoyed this deep scientific dive into the domestic part of our life. And soon I am actually going to be doing a deeper dive into all of the appliances in our home. And if you like this conversation, we're also going outside to look at the permaculture of our yard and our land, which is a very scientific approach to landscaping. Do comment below if you have any questions or thoughts about central vacuums or vacuums in general. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time. Thank you.